Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something sick. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then her child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. All week, been finishing things, cleaning up more. Started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel light. Like, you know what you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Okay. So you were saying you have a couple different things you might want to talk about? Yeah, but they're kind of the same thing. I think um, they just need a little parsing out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so like when I work with my therapist, I'll notice that certain aspects of the process trigger me. So it's like, if she goes, does that part know that you're aware of it? Mm -hmm. I just feel like really pissed off immediately. Okay. Um, I still haven't quite gotten to a place where I'm confident that I know why that's so triggering. Um, and then another thing is that I was actually listening to some of your podcasts and it's, it, this is not a, about you. It's something I've noticed in general is that like when people are gentle, mm -hmm. it really triggers me a lot. Interesting. Okay. Like I, yeah. I don't like when people are gentle or soft spoken. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it triggers like a, a huge feeling of insecurity or condescension for me. Yeah. Right, it's like I feel like I'm being babied when someone is gentle. Yeah, yeah. and it makes me feel rage, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting. Yeah, um, I feel like those two things are related. Um, not to do too much cognitive non-IFS stuff here, but just a couple more thoughts. Is like when I've also noticed, like one of your other persons that you talked to said that. I have a problem with some of the woke stuff, mm -hmm. not because I disagree with it politically necessarily, but because of the way it creates like an in-group, out-group kind of feeling. And so whenever I hear like language that is kind of like strange and everyone is expected to say this new language, yeah. it really triggers a rebellious thing in me. So yeah. I don't know if you have any thoughts on all this or if you think it's... Yeah. I mean, it uh, makes sense to me. I <clears throat> feel the same way a lot of times about that. Just all the different ways that uh, we're expected to speak, and all the different ways that, I don't know, um, things come off right or wrong, different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely something we can investigate. Yeah, I think I'm the least interested in the political triggering. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I only brought that up in so far as it might relate to how, why I get upset when my therapist asks me if this part is aware of me. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of equally interested in the, the anger towards my therapist as well as people being gentle. So maybe you can pick one or, um, okay. <clears throat> or ask me, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I mean, I would default to your intuition on which, which feels like it needs your attention first or, um, All right. Yeah. Ah, You know, I kind of feel like they're the same thing. And if we look at either of the two, we'll, we'll kind of figure something out here. Makes sense. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, almost just her gently saying, does that part know that you're there? Mm -hmm. Like, it's very triggering for me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, you might just kind of... Get yourself in that place mentally if you can kind of, you know, try to access that feeling when it comes up now. So kind of imagining that you're in that situation and then just noticing where in or around your body that sensation comes up. Yeah, it's a, it's a tension in my jaw. Um, like a brooding anger in my chest mm -hmm. um, and like my eyes want to roll back in my head like in a just like I don't, I don't know I've always had that with different emotions but yeah it's that's the feeling yeah okay. it's like I'm scowling you know mm. yeah yeah <clears throat> All right. So as you notice that constellation of feelings, sensations, how do you feel towards it? Angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, uh, I have an impatient part that feels like sick of having so many parts and how they always get in the way of things. And yeah. It, it, it's impatient and it just feels like, don't you know that you're just slowing things down? Like, why do you have to get upset with a therapist? You're ridiculous, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's a, that's a part saying that you're slowing things down by having that other part come up. So see what happens if you turn towards that part, that ang angry at the angry at the part part and ask for some space <laughs> in this conversation. Just ask for it to, to soften and just see how it reacts to that. You might, uh, you might think about it kind of going in a different room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually going to say things that I'm doing out loud it's because fine. I'm finding myself getting a little lost in my head here. It's so, fine. Um, yeah, so he's he's just kind of like he lacks faith that if we work with this part, that we it will. He thinks it'll be a waste of time, essentially. Yeah. Um, which is funny because if we weren't working with this part, we'd probably be like wasting our time <laughs> doing something mm -hmm. meaningless anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on how I could address that concern of his that it would be a waste of time? Um, you could, I mean, you could validate it that it's, it's not, out, it's not unreasonable to, to think that, I mean, you and I haven't done this together, so who knows? I, I might waste your time here. Um, so, um, 
You know, you, I like that. You could validate it, but yeah. you could also just... Um, you know, sometimes I just negotiate on minutes. I say, okay, well, how about 10 minutes? How about... How about let me give it a try and would that be okay just for an experiment? Sure. And it doesn't have to completely vanish, you know, it just it can it can come back in if it needs to, just kind of getting some space. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Yeah, he's cool with giving us some space. Cool. So how about now? How do you feel towards the um, tension in the jaw, the brooding anger part? Uh, kind of curious, yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead Just and... enough self. <laughs> Just enough, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all about percentages. It's all about percentages. Yeah. Maybe yeah. combined we can we can bring enough. Um, so yeah, let it know that. Let it know you're curious about it. Let it know mm -hmm. that you want to have a conversation with it. See if there's any way you can kind of deepen your access to it or bring it to the bring it to the front. Mm. And if you are able to yeah. get closer to so it. So I'm feeling mm -hmm. I'm feeling I'm blended from it. Great. Which yeah, which is good. Um but I still want to stay connected with it to a degree, so yeah. I'm gonna, hmm, just tune into it a little bit. I feel like if I listen to it, mm -hmm. I start to hear it say, like, it, like wants to call my therapist a bitch. Okay. And oh, uh, how how are we on uh, cussing in in these conversations? Say whatever the fuck you want, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, he's just saying that she's just like a, a stupid bitch. Um, I'm hearing that she's rude mm -hmm. and an intrusive. Okay. What is what else? What else does it want you to know about it or its experience? I'm getting the sense that the anger is very, like, very much masking fear. Yeah. That essentially, like, he's mad that she's barging in and doing it with this, like, condescending gentleness. And, but underneath, he just, like, I think what I'm kind of gathering is that there's, like, an exile who just feels really shameful. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, let's just stay with this part. Um, just make sure we're getting the whole story here. Um, yeah, yeah. Does it make sense to you, you know, what it's saying? Like, when you hear it saying that? Does it resonate? Mm. Somewhat, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's all a little vague still. I feel like there's a lot more concrete detail to come yeah but so far it makes a little sense yeah cool let it know that it makes sense to you to that degree let it know you're open to you're, you're open to hearing those details and you know we got time you don't have to share any of those details with me or out loud mm -hmm. but um just kind of just let it know that it has the floor and you're mm -hmm. and you're curious And 
I'm having this, um, like, as I was trying to tell this part that I understand it, it started to show me more. Mm -hmm. And it's almost, this almost feels like I'm in a dream right now. Like the the way my, my brain is kind of processing this information, processing this information. It's like, uh, nightmarish, like kind of images of like my mom being like ashamed of me or mm -hmm. not being someone I can trust to care how I feel. Yeah. And are you all right um, with that feeling of being in that kind of dream feeling and seeing that, seeing that stuff? Appreciate, appreciate you asking that. It kind of helped me unbun from it a little bit. And now I'm okay with this level. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So you can let you can communicate that with the part that, that, you know, you can handle those, you can handle that. Mm. You can kind of negotiate with it, how, how much it pours on you. Mm. But that right now you're all right. Yeah, the sense that I'm getting is that, like, beneath my defenses is my fatal flaw. And almost the, the dream that I'm seeing in my mind's eye is, like, it's about, like, being exposed, yeah. you know? Yeah. And kind of my older sisters and my mom kind of, like, descending upon me with judgment and critique and shame you know yeah and that all that all makes sense to you what it's showing you it does let it know yeah and, and we don't again we don't have to dive in and do exile work we just in this time we're just going to stay with this part um mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, the next question is kind of what, what is it afraid of happening if it doesn't get your attention that way? If it doesn't clench up the jaw? Rage against my therapist. If it doesn't rage, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Sounds like it's already given you some somewhat of an answer to that, but just see, yeah. see what else you can see. Well, it's like she would crack into the safe that holds her shame, you know? It's like she would... Yeah. She would... You know, the, the feeling that I got when I was younger, and it's completely tied into this, it's all coming to me right now. It's like, women are perfect, mm -hmm. and men with their sexual desires are disgusting. Yeah. And women are the perfect judges of these, like, wretched men. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, and and that was how I experienced myself. You know, and it's like my fatal flaw was that I had these secret sexual desires, which were just normal yeah. human male desires. You know, yeah, and uh, so when I think about my therapist being gentle and kind, it's kind of like she's going to open the safe of my sexuality or my vulnerability or like just these different things that, that are like extremely it's uncomfortable to sensitive, sensitive I guess. Yeah. 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 And then uh, I guess this is what I was going to say when I first started talking just now is like, and because she's a woman, mm -hmm. she is going to report to all the other women that mm -hmm. she has found me unlovable, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's kind of like evolutionary, you know? It's like if someone in your tribe sure. finds out something negative about you, the whole tribe will reject you. It's like that kind of feeling. Yeah. Cool. So see if you can kind of convert that to to your appreciation for this part, its intention to keep you safe from all of that. See if you can turn back towards yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Turn back towards it and just show it that you get it. It's heavy. It's big. It, it may be as old as time and, you know, this paradigm and, and you appreciate it for looking out for that. 
Mm, yeah. Yeah, as I appreciate it, it's showing me more of its burden, which is that it hates women. Mm -hmm. <sighs> because it wants to protect me from their judgment, you know? Yeah. And I'm letting it know that I appreciate that, you know, that effort. Yeah. And it's not crazy. We're not trying to banish it. We're not trying to, you know, just want to understand mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I've seen that this part is strategically trying to keep me out of relationship with women, romantic relationships. It's got a lot. It's got a, a heavy job. Mm-hmm. Bit of a hero. Yeah. And um, you could ask how it likes its job. <laughs> okay, that's a good question. So at first I was feeling this like smug enjoyment of the job mm -hmm. like <clears throat> kind of like uh, the enjoyment of like judging women instead of letting us be judged by women and um, and then I kind of like sent it some self energy and it kind of softened and like sort of admitted that that's like more of a coping enjoyment than a real enjoyment yeah you know yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue the conversation now that I've updated you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he's saying he doesn't really like the job, but he just really doesn't trust women. And he doesn't really see a way to not have to do what he has to do. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's actually telling me like women will never understand us, you know, and they, they're not interested or curious to really know us or love us or accept us. They want us to be this amazing person. And we'll never really be that the best we can do is kind of pretend. And so he's just trying to keep us from even trying because the whole thing's just women are just, yeah, they're judgmental and critical and negative and yeah. have high expectations. We'll never meet. Right. So that's his take. Yeah. So importantly, you know, it's, it's, causing these feelings in you that are unpleasant um, and it is protecting a part of you that has shame or has that you know feeling of, of what you call a fatal flaw so mm -hmm. so kind of putting aside how or, or like what you might do in the external world just try asking this part if you could take care of that stuff not not it the part, but if you could, if you could take care of that part that feels the shame or the fatal flaw and heal that, um, what would this part rather do with its energy? I'm letting him know that we're not trying to trick him because I'm feeling that he's angry that we're trying to... Uh, You know, um, but he's basically like what you're saying is impossible and you're trying to basically manipulate me into letting go of my role, you know? You know, if he doesn't like the job, then then I'd love 
or I'd love to see you help brainstorm other roles, other uses of his energy. So it's, okay. it's, yeah, it's all for the service yeah, me, of your system and for, and, and really of this part, not having to do what it doesn't like. Hmm. You know, I'm not really getting an answer um, that feels authentic. Mm -hmm. Like, on some level, I got something like you'd like to help me enjoy talking with women, you know, but I think I might have fabricated that just because it's the opposite of what's happening currently. Um, but what, what was definitely happening was I was feeling my fear of women while trying to listen to him. Yeah, yeah, sort of feeling the exile's fears, right? Yeah, yeah. So again, I think that would be kind of that's the that's the hope that you want to try to sell it is again it's it's hypothetical, but if if you could reduce those fears, if you could take care of that exile, just mag magic wand, you know. I'm getting something from him actually now. Um, yeah, that he would want to carry like a wholeness and contentment that we could bring to our relationships with women, you know? Um, like he's aware of this kind of deal with some of my parts where they're like, oh, romance, that's what we need to be whole and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And he wants to just foster an inner environment of being enough on our own, you know, and like not coming to rom romance with such desperation, but with just like a really steady self-confidence, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that could Which be, is kind of yeah. makes sense because he kind of already carries that strong energy, which right now is manifesting as anger towards women, but in the future it can just manifest as confidence. Well, the, <laughs> at, at the risk of sounding too gentle, that's beautiful, man. <laughs> that's beautiful? Is that yeah. What yeah. Yeah, it is beautiful. Um, <laughs> at the risk of sounding gentle. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel that he feels pretty good about that. Like that would be a positive experience for him that he he would look forward to if it were yeah. if it were on the horizon. Try asking him um, how old he thinks you are. Thirteen. Huh? So go ahead and update him on your real age. Just see how he reacts. Uh, it doesn't seem to mean much to him. Okay. I don't I don't think he really gets it, you know. Yeah. I think the idea is that you would be the one that would be healing the exile and not a 13 year old. Mm. Yeah, I'll let him know that. Yeah. Is 
so do protectors often think that the self is the exile with the deal? Hmm. Do they think the self is the exile? I'm, I, I don't like think, they think I'm, yeah. I don't know if I would say that. I think that they see the exile as a, as a part that needs protecting and it's more yeah. like maybe they just don't really see the self, you know, right, right, right. that, that energy wasn't there necessarily at important times. For example, when you were 13, you didn't, you didn't know how to navigate it. You didn't know how to, you know, heal parts that were hurting or whatever. And so the protector comes up and, and sees a 13 year old it has to save. And it kind of gets mm-hmm. stuck doing that. It's kind of, that's, that's what it does, and it, that's, yeah. how it, that's how it sees you. And so that's, gotcha. that's my theory, at least. Yeah. I think you're starting to take it in. So, <sighs> like, he was kind of thinking, um, you know, the system was just kind of very tiny, and now he's kind of seeing that there's this bigger context of self, you know? And he's like, oh, geez, you know, like, Zoom out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Open some doors. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what does he need from you in the future? <laughs> um, I'm laughing because he said, uh, "You know, I don't know what you can do, Doc, but I need you to help. You know, this egg or this little guy or whatever." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I like that he called me Doc. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's got that energy of like a parent who, you know, is talking to the doctor at the hospital and they're just, the parent doesn't have any concept of how this can be helped, but they exactly. kind of trust the doctor and they're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> And is there anything that he would like in your relationship with him going forward? Um, Just an opportunity to earn his trust so that we can kind of at whatever pace he's willing, start to have more intimacy in our lives, you know? Yeah. Sometimes I get, sometimes I go really deep here with my own parts when I'm like, okay, like, what do I do next? You know, like I I like to get kind of actionable. So I'll just leave that up to you of how much, like how much to go with that. Um, like what each other need? Um, just when you're asking what it what it needs from you, and it says, uh, you know, it's, it wants you to kind of work better together to to communicate better, or to, however it was saying it. Um, just okay. kind of like, really, what does that look like? How do I do that? When do I do that? Like, where do I do that? Um, <laughs> Again, it's useful for me, and, and I'm not going to push it on you, but um, sometimes that's nice to just Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning into it yeah. for a second here. No, I just kind of feel like he's just, you know, he doesn't have a lot of instructions or anything. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, it's just kind of like the floor is yours if if and when you want to work with the exile, you know? Yeah, that's, that's huge. Yeah, it's great. It's pretty, it's a privilege, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't have any more questions. I mean, you could um, 
you can thank the part. You can ask it whatever questions you might still have. Um, thank other parts that gave you space. Yeah, I'm letting the impatient part know that he did good and it created a future opportunity for healing and he's happy about that. And yeah, it was profound. It's awesome. Thank you, James. Thank you. How are you feeling? How'd we do? We did good, man. I feel good. That was uh that was nice. It was a different kind of pace than, than the work I do with my therapist and um, I, I liked it. I cool. liked it a lot. Cool. Well, yeah. I'm happy to do it again sometime. Me too. Me too. Maybe we can work with that exile next time. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Any anything? No, I'm I'm just I'm pretty pretty good, man. That was really um, more insightful uh, than I was expecting. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you've experienced where it's like you kind of had an idea of something intellectually, but then when you kind of experience the parts involved directly communicating it to you, it's a different experience. So yeah, I kind of knew I had these issues, but now it feels like a whole other level of access to them. So it's great. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll quit. Yep. let's quit while we're ahead. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, James. I guess I'll talk to you. Talk to you soon. All right. Have a good night. You too. See you. All right. Do you want to help bring more self energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Zikri, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others. And you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube. And they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments. And the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you. <laughs>